Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're doing Irish soda bread. Now, what is an Irish soda bread? It is a quick bread that is leavened with nothing else but baking soda. Now, this recipe is super special to me because it came to me from my very good friend, Carla Loriano. And Carla is a Christian romance author who has a brand new series coming out the prequel comes out in February. It is called The Broken Hearts Bakery. You guys, if you have never read a clean romance before, you have definitely got to check out some of her books. A lot of the books that she's written actually circle around food, so they are a lot of fun for foodies. So I hope you'll check it out. But this recipe is from her. She gave it to me probably 12 years ago. And you guys, since March is rapidly approaching, I thought what better way to break in the green than do an Irish soda bread. So let's get started. What you're gonna need for this recipe is four cups of flour or 480 grams, one teaspoon of baking soda or four grams of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt or six grams, 14 ounces of buttermilk or 414 milliliters, one to two tablespoons of sugar to taste. That is 12 and a half grams to 25 grams. So inside my bowl, I have my four cups of flour and I'm gonna add my baking soda, my salt and my sugar. Now, there will be some people that say, okay, that's a lot of sugar in the bread. It's good. Don't, don't knock it until you try it. Now, traditionally, there are raisins or craisins or even cranberries in this bread. We're not doing that today. We're just going to do Carla's recipe because it is good. Now, it's not like a regular bread. You'll see whenever we get done, but it's a lot of fun. So we're just going to give that a good mix so that everything kind of comes together. And then we're going to add the buttermilk. Now, if you do not have buttermilk in your house, don't panic. You can just use milk and a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice. I'll leave a little recipe right here um, just in case you don't have buttermilk. I always have buttermilk because I have it in a little canister in my refrigerator, but this recipe, I'm all out. So I put it on my shopping list because I always have it in my refrigerator. So let's just go ahead and add it all together. All right, and we're just gonna stir as we try and incorporate this. And it's just gonna come together in a really craggy dough. All right, so it's gonna get a little bit tough to mix together. Just keep going. And then we're gonna turn it out. That's my oven preheating, 425. It's gonna get a little bit harder to work with, but we're gonna turn it out and shape it just a little bit. So at this point, I have my pastry mat down. If you don't have a pastry mat, you can just do it on a well-floured surface. Um, but basically, I'm just gonna turn it out and we're gonna work the rest of this all together. All right, so I have some extra flour here. I'm gonna kind of powder my hands a little bit and I'm just gonna start pushing this together. Now you can feel that there's still some sticky bits in there while there's still some dry bits. We don't want it to be dry at all. So I'm just gonna turn it over, see, see some of it's sticking and some of it's not. So we want everything to be about the same consistency, but it's important that we don't overwork it. So I'm just gonna, Push this around just a little bit. Try to get all of that flour incorporated. See, right there. It's kind of like a scone almost in that texture and that feeling that you get. All right, so we're just gonna knead it a couple times just to bring it together into a nice little dough. And we're just gonna tuck and roll and tuck and roll. And it's gonna look craggy. That is the nature of this bread, but you don't want it to be too craggy and you definitely don't want it to be too sticky. So if it starts to stick to your hands, get a little more flour and we'll just poke it together like so. And we're looking good. So I'm just tucking this under as I go and that's only because I want it to kind of be a ball shape. So the next thing we're gonna do is grab a piece of parchment paper. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pick this up with well-floured hands. So I'm gonna pick it up, make sure it's unstuck. I'm gonna set it right in the middle of my parchment paper and then I'm gonna reform it. Make sure, make sure that it's all in there nice and tight. All right, and now we're gonna score it, but let me wash my hands. 
Okay, so what I have here is a bottle of water. I also have a Dutch oven of any kind. All right, next we are going to make slices in the top like a crisscross. So I just have my knife here and we're gonna make really deep, thick lines going down. So like we're talking half an inch because we really want it to open up. So that's why I'm not using my lom. So nice and thick. Perfect. And you can even do, do, do. <laughs> See how it's so cool and it's like opening up? All right, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to lift it into our Dutch oven and we're gonna drop it in. Now, if you see any of it start to stick together again, just coax it apart again. But that looks pretty good. Next, what I'm gonna do, and Carla's recipe didn't call for this, but I like a little moisture in my bread. I'm going to lightly spritz, and I do mean lightly, lightly spritz the top of this bread. Number one, it's gonna create some steam and make a thicker crust, and number two, just makes it a little happier of an area to do its thing. So I'm going to spritz just a bit, and then we're gonna cover and get into a 425 degree oven for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, we are gonna remove the cover and bake for 15 minutes more, and I'll show you the results. Be back. All right, you guys, I am back, and check out this soda bread. Now, if you have made soda bread in the past, you will be saying, hey, your crust looks different than mine. That is indeed because I used that spray of water over the top. That's the way we prefer it because it just makes a nicer crust all the way around, a little less craggy and a little more smooth and almost buttery. And because I use the um, water, my crisscrosses, you can definitely still see them, but they browned so evenly, it's fantastic. I almost feel like I could have probably made my cuts even thicker down there, but it's fine. It's going to be great. My guys actually love the taste of this bread over the sourdough for their jelly sandwiches and their toast. So that's why we make this and it's really good. So let's cut into it. The crust is nice and crunchy, just like I love it. And ta-da, look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. Now, this is very different than sourdough. In fact, I wanted to show you the difference. So this is a piece of sourdough that I made earlier this week. This is what's left over of that loaf for this week. But I wanted to show you the distinct difference between these two. So as you can see, the soda bread is a much tighter crumb and it doesn't have many air holes because there wasn't a lot of um, leavening agent in it. It was a whole teaspoon for this whole loaf. Whereas all of our very loose crumb and very stretchy bread from the yeast, the natural yeast or the sourdough in that one. Both breads are fantastic. But for sandwiches and for dinner, we prefer the sourdough bread, which by the way, I store on my counter like this so it doesn't dry out and you, it's good for like two or three days. The same goes for our soda bread. I will store it cut side down on our countertop or on something that is, you know, like a, a cutting board and it shouldn't dry out and it should be good for several days. Um, this is great for toast and uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and just a general bread that people like to eat. We love it here in this house, but I really love my sourdough. But it is very different from a regular traditional loaf. This is a quick bread and it works very, very well. Some things that I would do differently that I don't know why didn't happen this time. Usually when I do my loaf, which is really funny because I had one, and I had a small piece left over when I started this video and my husband came down mid shot and he actually took it and ate it and left. And I went to go look for it and it was missing. He already ate it. So the last loaf that I did was much more compact and that's because I pushed kind of like the sourdough way and made it in a much tighter ball. And so it was a little bit taller. So it really does matter how big your loaf is when you start it as to how much it's going to spread out and be large. The other thing that I have noticed 
is that if I preheat my Dutch oven before I put the bread in, it does not spread as far out. But I wanted to try it with no preheated Dutch oven because sometimes that's a pain and sometimes I forget. And I did notice that it spread out quite a bit more. So I think next time I make this, I will definitely preheat my Dutch oven. I will make sure that it is well into a ball, kind of a tight ball like a sourdough might be, but not quite because it's all craggy. And then to make my cuts a lot thicker so that we kind of get those distinctive little, you know, like corners of the bread that soda bread is known for. But otherwise, you guys, this is a really great bread that you can make at home, a quick bread, and it is so fantastic. So I encourage you to make Carla's soda bread at home. And if you do, please leave me a comment. She is watching. Also, be sure to check out some of her books. I will leave links to her books in the info of this video. She is an amazing friend and she is an amazing author. So I hope you'll check them out. And otherwise, you guys, that's it. If you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week and I'm always looking for the next adventure. And sometimes I hold on to the adventure for 12 or so years. But if you have an idea for me, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you on the next adventure. Bye. I forgot to taste it. So um, I guess those of you who stuck around get me tasting it. <laughs> oh, man. The crust of the one that you spray is so much better than the crust that you don't spray. Just keep that in mind. It's really good. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to take this and we're going to store this and we'll see you later.